Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope everybody's doing amazing. And um, coming back to you with a, another pretty dope ass guest, um, Mr. Cornboy. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Yes, it's not about food. You'll 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 see why. His cornboy, but um, he is part of the Four Horsemen um, Studios. And they have sculpted pretty much, uh, I don't know, I would say 60 to 70% of my childhood. So a bunch of different toy lines, a bunch of different companies that work for, they do their own stuff too with Mythic Legends and etc. So uh, they've been in the game for a long time. Um, it's a group of amazing, talented people. So I got the opportunity to chat with uh, Eric Cornboy about, you know, what he loves to do and... Um, his collection he has a huge collection of toys uh loves masco and um and what they're doing with the 112 line and um yeah it, w it was really good so um if you enjoy as per usual uh feel free to uh follow leave a like little comment action and um if you don't well, i appreciate you being here anyways so uh thank you all you guys for your time anyways uh without further ado Little cornboy action. Oh, I can hear you. Hello. What's gap? <laughs> what's happening? I love your what? background. Oh, what's my background? It's uh, just, oh, just my stuff. Yeah, that's okay. what I mean. A couple days ago, somehow I it was there was a picture from when Karina and I visited Hawaii, and there was a bunch of like foliage in the background. <laughs> how it got on there? I think it's because I had it all set up on my phone or something, and I don't know what happened, but looks That's like we're good now. That's funny. So how you doing, man? Pretty good. How about you? Long time no chat, man. I, dude, for real. I was just thinking about it. I was looking at uh, past videos, um, and um, I came across the 2011 Comic Con when you guys had the the Raven, the yeah. the two up Raven there. A long time ago. And yeah, <laughs> long time ago, and. Um, and yeah, I think it was 2016, the last time I went by. Like, I, were you at San Diego Comic Con in 2016? Yes, uh, I think the uh, last time that Four Horsemen was there actually um, showing at San Diego would have been 19, probably 2017 or 2016. Okay. Uh, but we would, have been, we would have been in the booth with... Um, at that time, it would be Icon Heroes. Before that, it was Action Figure Express. Our buddy Pat, that runs those companies, um, had us gave us a chunk of his booth to, to show stuff and okay. bullshit with people. Yep, yep, yep. That's why that's why I had Icon Heroes because I I typed in Four Horsemen on my uh, on my videos and a yep. bunch of the Icon Heroes stuff came up and I'm like, oh, that's right, I forgot. Yeah, we were sharing a booth with him. He's a good dude. Awesome, yep. awesome. So, dude, listen, I appreciate your time, dude. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, I, I love, I've been loving to talk to you for a long time. Yeah. So, now I got this podcast, and I'm taking <laughs> my excuse to talk to people that I love, um, talk about their passions and stuff. So, uh, you're it's, here. It's, I've, I've gotten a chance to listen to a few episodes uh, leading up to this after you let me know that you had a new podcast, and now I'm, uh, I'm following you on YouTube, which I don't awesome. follow too many podcasts on YouTube. It's more, you know, just <laughs> stuff. So that's what's up. Okay, so hey, hey, I appreciate it. Oh, the little Colts helmet back there in the back. You're still a fan, huh? It, I'm still a fan. Come on, come Die hard, good man. Come on. There, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm still a, still a fanatic as well. Uh, I I know I I saw her post after we uh, kicked uh, Titan ass that uh, uh, yeah. last week. You know, super excited about that. We're on top of the division, so you know, doing well this season. Keep it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Drew uh, Drew Brees. Look at me. Uh, Phillips Philip Rivers yeah. can stop. You know, intercepting. You know, throwing interceptions and shit. So she hates Philip Rivers, <laughs> but she loves what's going on with the team now. So. She's Philip Rivers, him, at least. Listen, Philip Rivers and the Chargers were a, were a pain in my ass. That's I'm like sure it. for her as well. You know, we were right there getting into the playoffs, and they would come and slap us out of the playoffs, or we were in the playoffs, and they would slap us out of the 
Like yeah. it was, yeah, yeah, bane of my existence. So it was kind of weird, you know, having Philip Rivers come to the team. I'm like, eh. yeah, she calls him a big whiner. <laughs> Since he's a crybaby. Uh, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. So, Am I sound uh, okay on your end? What happened? Am I sound okay on your end? Yeah, you sound good. Okay, because uh, we had uh, issues during G-Con and Legion's Con with some uh, feedback and some, like, chaotic noises here and there, and I just wanted to – I didn't think it was my end. I think it was because we had three or four guys recording in the studio it, itself. So oh, okay. So I think it's some echo and feedback over there. Probably if, you know, nobody was using headphones or somebody had the, the audio coming from the speakers, you know, it hits the microphone, and it just – it's a clusterfuck. Yeah, nobody had headphones, so – we're so, not uh, technologically advanced. <laughs> We've only been doing Zoom because we were forced to a few months ago because of a project, the uh, video game project we're working on. So, gotcha, gotcha. I've been doing Zoom, you know, for uh, God knows how many years now because all most of my my jobs are um, remote, so everybody is everywhere. So we would have to use Zoom, and um, so very familiar with Zoom when it came out. You know, uh, I've been through people pooping while they're on Zoom. You know, ages ago. And, um, yeah, so to me, very normal, very normal. I just never thought about using it to, you know, start a podcast and talk to people yeah. like this. So Yeah, it's great. My, uh, my um, business, for me at least, is completely remote now too because I had heart surgery a little over a year and a half ago. So if I could get out and catch COVID, I'm probably mm. screwed. So Yeah, yeah, you got to yeah, be very I'm careful. Fat. I'm fat and I've got a bad heart. Yeah, probably not a good idea to catch COVID, so. I'll stay here in my little room in my house for now. Be safe. Yep, yep. Agreed. So, so yeah, I learned to use Zoom and uh, a couple other things. We used a thing called Crowdcast for our uh, G-Con and Legion's Con. Our, our webmaster at um, SourceForceman.com, Jeremy Gerard, he's a technological genius, and me, Jim, and Eric know nothing about technology. So he hooked <laughs> us up with that, and that was a great format to do a large-scale pot. Um, kind of like a podcast where we can have multiple people on screen at one time and then you can have hundreds and thousands of people online at one time and watching. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pretty good, yeah. So that's if you awesome. get to, to a point where you need something like that, Crowdcast seems like a really good avenue for that. Shit, if I had that many people on the podcast, man, what's up? You know, I made it. <laughs> I like made it. Play back there too. Is there any uh, remaining 3A stuff back there? I'm not seeing any right now. It's all the way. In, I don't know if you can oh, see. I see him. Yep, I see him way back there in the corner. Is that the? Uh... That's the Peace Day. Um. Oh, it's Peace Day. All right. Yeah, I forgot the name Swap of the ball. robot. It's the one with the flat head. Looks like a yeah. trash can. Yep. But uh, but yeah, and then I have um uh uh wow, I forget I forgot their names right now. I'm blanking out. But I got I got two of them still right there. My favorites. So deliciousness. <laughs> Listen, um, uh, I wanted to ask you because it's it's clear to anybody who knows who you are that you are a um, a a brand ambassador for Mesco, right? That's you're all known for that. <laughs> Not for sculpting toys, that. for a brand ambassador for Mesco. <laughs> because man, and I have to agree with you, dude. Every time they they show something, I'm just like drooling. Shit looks amazing. I I love that scale and. Damn, and I just saw the uh, the Hellboy you posted. I, I didn't see it from them, and I'm like, wow. I haven't seen the movie. I've heard it's, you know, crap or whatever. Yeah. But the design and the toy, they look fantastic. That's the thing about that. I've been a big Hellboy fan for, I don't know, ever since it first debuted, since it first showed up in the uh, the John Byrne Next Men comic book when Hellboy showed up. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then I started hunting out. And I was already a Mike Mignola fan. And so I started hunting down everything Hellboy. So I've been a Hellboy fan since its first, you know, since he first revealed him. Really? But I was excited for the Hellboy movies. The first two, well, the first one I liked quite a bit. The second one, it was so-so. But then the remake that they just did, man, I've, I've only been able to make it through like 20 minutes of it twice. I just wow. can't. <laughs> it's rough. That I will eventually one day sit down, suck it up, and have some popcorn and just barrel through the whole thing but man it's got to be a time when i don't have absolutely anything else to do because <laughs> I, it's tough but the job that Mel mezco did on the sculpture of that thing i actually have it right here i've got all my stuff here that i just recently got in 
plastic Ziploc bags and uh, getting ready to <laughs> hopefully display them soon. But this thing is absolutely, I don't know how well you can see it on screen there. It, lo it looks fantastic, dude. But the representation they did of what was done in the movie, this to me, the, the, the look on this thing looks better than the makeup in the movie. Wow. They did a great job. But, yeah, Mezco's just, they, they have my heart right now. And it's all because of, I was a huge Mego collector when I was a kid. I'm an old fart. So, <laughs> back in the 70s, I was a big Mego collector. And I have I have the boxed Fantastic Four around here somewhere from Mego from the 70s. And I have a few other, like some Planet of the Apes Migos still left. But those were just it for me when I was a really? kid. And... Although you look back at them now and you say, hmm, the clothing and stuff that was done on those wasn't that great. The Mezco figures, what they're doing with the clothing and everything here now is what I imagine those Mego figures to be back in the 70s. It's like I looked at them as a kid and, yeah, you know, I thought, oh, these are top notch. There's nothing that could be any better. And it kind of brings me back to the nostalgia of those old uh, Mego figures and but done like just unbelievably well like all the stitching and everything is beautiful it's just everything that they do on those figures just to me knocks it out of the park some of the likenesses of like movie character stuff are are still a little bit off but other than that i just have no complaints about anything that company does it's it's the only toy line in my life that i've ever been a completist on oh wow so you're buying Everything. Everything. Everything that's released, at least one, sometimes two, sometimes. <laughs> and that depends on whether I think I can customize them into something else that I want. So, gotcha. I want buy multiples just for that potential <laughs> customization aspect. You know, sometime in the future when I don't, when I have any spare time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious, dude. I see. I see that that. That middle shelf that I see from here, I think it's all Mezco. Like, I see everything. Yeah, there's a bunch of Mezco over there. And there's a couple of Mez... Uh, they're not Mezcos, but they're customs done by... I, there was a small company that's doing custom parts. Okay. And I used Mezco bodies. This was the Frankenstein body. Wow. The, uh, the metal Batman character, and then this... I don't remember which body this was I used, but it was one of the Mezco bodies. Somebody released a Riddler in the uh, the suit from like more like the animated series. Wow, but that looks amazing, dude. Yeah, it's good stuff. But yeah, it's there's a lot of Mezco on those shelves back. Like, there's a few Mezco customs. There's some Marvel Legends and a bunch of other stuff back there. <laughs> I love. It's a mismatch. That... <laughs> I love that you. Not only make toys, but enjoy them to the point where you collect them as well. Yeah. You know, you're not like, oh, I make, I make toys. I'm so sick of You know how people like with like jobs usually go to their job and then they're just like, okay, fuck. I don't want to know anything about, you know, anything related to it. Well, that's the thing. I hardly have any Mythic Legions on the shelves here. Well, there's a couple of our trolls, but uh, I have hardly any. Ugh, these guys massive. That's so badass. Any, this is our uh, forest troll. For mythic legions but i hardly have any of that on the shelves because here at home because i see it every single day like every day there's something mythic legions either at the studio or or on my computer or something so i don't really need it up on my shelves here this is all stuff that i've loved all my life that i just kind of throw up on my shelves for like inspiration when i'm working things like that gotcha <laughs> that's freaking awesome so, because um, a lot of people are like, well, where's the stuff that you made? Why don't you have the stuff you made on your shelves? It's like, I see that stuff every single day. I love it. It's near and dear to my heart, but it's around me all the time. So, this stuff yeah. is stuff that I don't get to have around me all the time. Man, completely understandable, man. Completely understandable. But I just love that you, like, you hardcore collect toys, too. Like, yeah. You, yeah, that's a passion of yours. Yes. There's no question. Yeah, like, uh, like, like I said, I mean, I've, I've never been a completist on the line. I used to collect a lot of... Uh, Micronaut stuff. I used to collect, obviously, as you know, 3A stuff. Mm -hmm. That was an obsession of mine for a while, but there are only certain types of 3A I was interested in collecting. The, yeah. the medics, the the uh, Soviet ones, you know, all the, the red. Yeah, ones, the red. Like yeah. That. I, different factions of uh, 3A stuff that I would collect. And so I wasn't really a completist about that, but I don't know. Mezco just has hooked me, and I'm a completist there, and 
Yeah, it's been a few I'm years, man. To promote them because they're doing a spectacular job. So I, I, agreed, agreed. I mean, and again, it, it's been a few years, and you've been. Uh, I I would assume since day one. I mean, I, I've, all I've heard is praises from you. So uh, incomplete, understandable. It was for the most part. It, it wasn't day one. Like I think their first release was uh, Batman, and then Punisher, or maybe vice versa. Or, and, and then there was a uh, Judge Dread. It was mm-hmm. they may have been before those or something. And I looked at them. I thought they were all really cool. But what really hooked me is one day, uh, me and the other guys from Four Horsemen went to New York Toy Fair. And I walked down to the Mezco booth um, to take a look at what they had on display there. And uh, a guy who used to work there, an old friend of mine from back even before he was working at Mezco, Pierre, uh, he handed me their Toy Fair giveaway. They were giving away an actual Mezco figure at Toy Fair. I was like, oh, that's cool. And it was a Spock figure. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of, you know, somewhat a fan. (laughs) Old school Star Trek. Not like hardcore, but I liked it. When I got back to our booth at Toy Fair and I opened that thing up and I pulled that Spock figure out, it's like my eyes lit up because it was like the the Star Trek figures I had, you know, the Mego ones back when I was a kid. But... 10 times done, done 10 times better it was just gorgeous and i was like uh-oh this is a problem so I went back uh-huh. into the, yeah i went it's back to the booth again and i got a uh, uh one of their catalogs they had there and saw all the stuff that they had planned for that upcoming year and then realized they had released the batman it was a dark knight batman mm-hmm. they I think they released the Punisher before that. That may have been after Spock. But I think it was after day. after Batman. But yeah, like right there. Was yeah, one of those first Dutch figures. Man, I was like, uh oh, I'm gonna have to go back and get those two and check them out because those are super cool figures too. And then after that, it was like every release I gotta have. I gotta get on there. I gotta get it. I go on. I like. I'm friends with the guys at Mezco. You know, I've known Mez for years. I knew Pierre while he was working there, and some of the other guys I've gotten friendly with now. But um, I go online to fight for those figures when they go up for sale, just like everybody else does. I don't get like the special treatment like that. I don't, I don't like run in and say, Hey, yeah, I'm corn. <laughs> I don't like doing that. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. I'm in, I'm right there in the trenches with everybody else fighting for those figures. And I love the chase. I don't get the chase of going to the brick and mortar stores like we used to. So I like the 3A stuff when I used to get to chase that stuff and fight for it to get it online. Oh, my God. That was a – So days. Far, I've been somewhat successful in, 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 in my fights for the Mezco stuff. But uh, there have been a couple that I've just not missed and had to try to find on the aftermarket. So mm, Get raped with them prices, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same pain as all the other collectors out there, yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. I feel you on that one, dude. Um, hey, what was I going to say? Um. Oh my God, I blanked out. You mentioned. Me- oh, I was gonna ask you. Yes. So you say, do you have like all the Mescos now, like including the stupid, expensive Puerto Rico con? Uh, I don't have that one. The oh, only okay. ones that I don't have now at this point is I don't have um a couple of the Dark Knight Batman variants because I got the two that I really like. There's the one that's just in the black and gray costume, and then I got the one set with where it's Batman with in the blue and gray costume with battle damage where he's fighting against the mutant leader. Uh-huh. Got that set, and those are the only two that I really wanted. And I'm not enough of a completist that I need every one of those variants. And the gotcha. same thing with um, Punisher. I think I've got three of his variants, or maybe one like super limited special edition or something that I don't have, but I don't really want it, so that doesn't bother okay, me. Okay, okay. But I even have the two, these two here. These were one is a I forget they're they're both Asian uh, convention exclusives that that's the only way you've been able to get them. Holy moly! And so I, you know, I had to do some wheeling and dealing to get these two, but I got <laughs> these two. And the only one I'm missing of the those are Gomez figures. The only Gomez I'm missing they just released. It was just a prize that somebody got that it's exactly like these, except his costume is red rather than black or white. Yep. And I think people were saying that, 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 that potentially only four of those were released. So I'll probably never get my hands on one of those. But, you know, I had a pink cupcake tomorrow queen 
from 3A at one point. So Oof. you never know. You never know. I'll, I might get my hands on it someday. That's so true, man. I, Jesus Christ. I remember going to Beijing and getting the the Tomorrow Queen. I don't know my, if it was the same one. She had the pink um, full leather suit or whatever. Yeah. The, and, the pink, do you still have that? No, no, no. Good Lord. There was, there was a point where I sold that thing. Yep. Uh, me too. I, me too. Yeah. I made a lot of money. I did too. And I financed a trip to Hawaii. The, the, the Hawaii background I was talking about earlier. My <laughs> wife amazing. and I went to Hawaii and... I got a new Jeep off of how much I sold that thing for. That's badass. That was crazy. Yeah, now, I, I traded off a bunch of my prize 3A stuff for it to get it, but it was all stuff that I collected over the years that weren't the factions that I was really into, but it was stuff that a lot of people wanted, and I wasn't really hanging on to it to trade. Gotcha. But when I saw that pink Tamara Queen, I was like, oh, I need to have that. <laughs> but then the price the guy was offered me to buy it from me, I don't know, a year later, I was like, yeah, I'm stupid if I don't take that. This is a 12 inch tall hunk of plastic, and this guy's offering me literally thousands of dollars for it. Whoop. I'd be an idiot. It's gone. Yep. Yep. And I needed a, uh, to have my car fixed, and instead, I just got rid of my car and bought a Jeep. So oh, beautiful. Damn. It was an old Jeep, but <laughs> it was an old lifted Jeep, but it was well worth it every penny i put into it that's awesome that's awesome dude so hey so i want to ask you before i start talking about toys or anything else corn boy where did that come from <laughs> well i think as you're well aware i'm from indiana originally <laughs> my wife as you know as you are is a fanatic colts fan so um i'm not i'm not really into sports i'll watch <laughs> it if you know if they're in the playoffs or something i'll i'll check it out and watch it but I've never really been into sports that much. I've been a, pretty much a geek all my life. But when I moved out to New Jersey from Indiana, I worked in a machine shop, and there was a guy there, a uh, Yugoslavian guy, and he used to talk to me, Eric, and he asked me questions about Indiana and stuff because the only place he had ever been, he moved straight from Yugoslavia to New Jersey. Oh, wow. And that's the only place he'd ever been. So one day he said, Eric, do they have cows in Indiana? Do they have cows? Cattle? And I was like, no, no, it's not really a cattle state. It's more of a, a corn state. I said, we, we, I mean, there's cattle farms there, but Indiana's a huge corn state. And he goes, oh, so you're a corn boy, not a cowboy. And he just started laughing his butt off. And <laughs> after that, everybody in the machine shop that I was working started calling me corn boy. And the name, nickname just kind of stuck. I thought it was funny, too. I'm, I don't give a shit if people make fun of me, so whatever. That is hilarious. And, uh, <laughs> then when I started working at McFarland Toys, uh, and there's another guy there who's now my business partner, Eric Treadaway, whose first name was also Eric. My first name's Eric. So he, he his first name was also Eric. So when they brought me in, they're like, well, we're not sure what to call you because <laughs> – We'll have two Eric's, and then we can't call you both Eric and Eric. And it's like, all right, you can just call me Corn Boy because that's what I was called at my last job. And I've had nicknames all my life. And they're like, okay, and that just kind of stuck, and that's just what I'm known as in the industry now. So I just kind of go by it. In every every business email we send, it's Jim, Eric, and Corn Boy. <laughs> Everybody's like, wait, what? Did you say Corn Boy? <laughs> so... That yeah, is hilarious. A freaking Yugoslavian with that joke. Like, he killed it. He probably thought this is the oh, best yeah. joke I've ever told. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he loved it. And especially since it stuck, he, he wore it like a badge after that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That oh, is boy. funny. Good morning, poor boy. <laughs> so you're not a cowboy. You're a cowboy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny because I have, um, I have, friend, I have a, a friend from Serbia. He's like 100 feet tall, big guy. This talks guy the same way. He talks the same way, and um, you know I can just imagine him. His name's Vlad, and I would just imagine him saying his second same shit, and I just, I'd probably die just because of the accent. This guy went by uh, Joe Todoric, and I was like, "Wait, your your name's not really Joe. You come <laughs> from Serbia, and your name's Joe." And he said he he told me that his name was actually Jovo Todoric. So after that, I cursed. He, I was like, "Well, why do you go by Joe?" He goes, "Because everybody screw my name up here. <laughs> Nobody can pronounce it." So I start calling Yovo after that. It's like, okay. that, why do people not take the time to pronounce your name? But it's a good question, man. I don't get it. Some people don't care. He was a good dude. Love Yovo to death. That is beautiful. By the way, you mentioned Eric, and Eric was in the the toys that made us. 
Yes. In the in the He Man episode, I don't know if he did another episode, but I know he was in He Man. I know he's he loves He Man. Yep, he's a He Man fanatic. Like when he was a kid, um, his mom still has. His mom actually just passed away recently, but I think the dad still has this little white little coffee table they had, and underneath on the bottom of the coffee table, you flip it over, and it's drawings of he-man and dc superheroes and marvel superheroes all on the bottom of that coffee table where eric used to lay underneath there and draw on the bottom of the coffee table and that was the start <laughs> of his adventure into the toy industry so yeah he's been a he-man fan since a little bitty type and to me he still is a little type i always call him a kid he's you know, only 10 years younger than me but <laughs> man, that boy's talented man he's talented he's he does 99.9% of the Mythic Legion sculpting. You know, oh, wow. we have another guy that does accessories and stuff, but all the figural work, that's all him. That's he's amazing. He really is. Yeah, he's fucking awesome, dude. Like, the, yeah. the Mythic Legion stuff is ridiculous. Like, yeah. you know, you got the the Elithia, is what they call it, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the newest wave, yeah. The, the new wave, which looks badass, uh, uh, you know. Oh, pre-order right now on storehorseman.com. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. If you're uh, again, wherever you're at right now, on the description will be the link to all this shit. So please awesome. follow, follow the Four Horsemen, follow Corn Boy, and um, check out the store as well. Because all those links, I'm gonna put it down there so people can check them out. Cool, thanks, man. Of course, of course. But um, but yeah, like the the sculpting is fantastic. Did he do the Ravens too? The Black Raven and the yes, most of it. Okay. Um, one of our old employees sculpted a couple of the heads, but everything else. Um, all the sculptural stuff was all him. Any of the, the weapons and things like that were all fabricated by somebody else. But Eric did all the sculpting on the bodies. You know. The, yeah, which is like the body the was like part of it. exactly. <laughs> I mean, good lord. Yeah. So when that shit came out, like I told you in 2011, I'm like just mind blown. Cause... Yeah, those those did really well for us, and that kind of let us know that oh, we might be able to do something like with this kind, this style of sculpture and this style of figure. Um, so Eric and I had always talked about doing like a myth, medieval sword and sorcery kind of line. And after Lord of the Rings, the movies were finished and the toy line had stopped being released. There was nothing really else out there. There was a couple of companies, I think maybe DC Direct did them for a while. And maybe McFarlane did a little bit of like the World of Warcraft figures or something like that. Uh -huh. But there's no like real sword and sorcery line, so we decided, you know what, let's give this a shot and see how it goes. And we did our first Kickstarter for Mythic Legions, and it did okay for us. So yeah, it's still going strong. What five and a half years later, I think. So it's doing well for us. Pretty awesome and impressive as shit. Because I mean, it's just you guys. It's not like yeah. you're, you know, Mattel or Hasbro, any of these big ass companies. It's just no. you know, just me, Jim, doing... and Eric, and uh, um, some people helping out with with uh, some accessory sculpting here and there. It's, that's usually Ben Missinar. He's uh, one of our freelance sculptors that does stuff for us. He usually does the weapons and accessories. Um, I'll design them and stuff and draw them up to him. I used to fabricate all that stuff. But now that we've gone all digital, mm -hmm. I'm too stupid to be able to figure that out quickly. <laughs> so <laughs> I do it the old school way, draw things up, just make sketches and stuff. And Ben has come become so intuitive off of the uh, of the kind of stuff that we need that mm -hmm. send him the drawings and stuff and he whips it out. I might have a couple of revisions here and there on the stuff, but he's been nailing it left and right when we've been having him do that stuff. And then um, Jim handles all the that's one of my other business partners, Jim Preziosi, handles all the uh, the digital aspect of um, you know uh, doing the. The, the prints and the, all that kind of stuff, and he oversees all that and all the paint master work. Um, Sherry Cook, our painter, does almost all the painting. Um, we do, in times of need, when we get, we get really crazy busy, uh, we've got another painter in there that who's, does other paint work for us, uh, Cameron Smith, who jumps in and helps out on paint, and then Bill Mancuso, a guy who's at the studio doing literally everything man this guy can do anything you put any job you set in front of him say hey bill we need this Done. tears it up just kills it um he jumps in and helps on painting and stuff too he does, does a lot of sculpting for us and some side projects with a uh um broadway props company that we do some work with he okay. handles a lot of that work for us and stuff so 
And That's then cool. uh, Chris Garwich at the studio, he's the guy who handles all of our pro pro uh, production management. He goes back and forth with the factories and makes sure that all of our prototypes come out good and that all of our production pieces come out beautiful. He's the guy who oversees all that. He's been with us from back when the Ravens were first being done. He was working at NECA at that time. Wow. And he would fly back and forth to China, and we were having the stuff produced over there. He'd say, you know, while I'm over there, you know, when I'm done with my work, I'll go by and I'll check that stuff out for you and make sure it's going good if you want. We're like, yeah, sure. So after he left NECA, we said, come over come here. Come over. <laughs> yeah. So he, does, he handles all that for us now, and he's um, – doing his own stuff on the side with uh, another company. And um, he's also right now handy, handling all of our uh, shipping management. Um, he's not going to forever. Right now he's like getting it kind of streamlined and where we need it to be. And then we're bringing in other people to handle all of our shipping. Gotcha. Getting a system together. So you can just train somebody real quick and then yeah. they can, you know, roll with it. He's, he's, he's incredible at that where he can just streamline everything and just make it all work. Hopefully flawless. We'll see. <laughs> seems to be so far a lot better than I could do. That's definitely sure. It's definitely true. That's, so, and I heard you're heading into space, I think, right? By the uh, Cosmic Legions? Is that yes, what's happening? Yes, sir. Cosmic Legions, Legions is our next venture. We've been teasing that for years. Um, because Mythic Legions, when we started, we wanted to do a sword and sorcery type thing. But we were thinking, you know what? There's no reason we can't, this, this form factor that we're doing, there's no reason that we can't expand this into other genre. And the first one we wanted to do was a space-based version of mythic legions we just take the name legions legions is done uh, wait, let me go back first mythic legions the way it was created is that the whole figure is modular you can separate it and break it apart and kind of put it back together and reconfigure it into another figure customizers have taken that to a whole new level i mean if you look up mythic legions customs anywhere on the internet you'll see hundreds and hundreds of just beautiful customs of the Mythic Legions figures that we didn't expect fans to do. So we're cool. thinking, you know, we could take that form factor into other legions, and you can build your own legions. Another aspect of Mythic Legions is that we create these things called Legion Builders, which they're a much lower price point than the basic figure in that they have less paint applications. So you can take these guys and buy them and army build them. You can take, tear them apart, reconfigure them, make different characters out, or you can take exactly what's there and you can army build them and literally make your own legions of action figures. So we decided, let's go into space next. And we were originally calling it, just loosely calling it Galactic Legions. But, you know, <laughs> Star Wars is kind of like taking that name Galactic and just kind of yeah, yeah. everywhere. So we thought, you know, let's come up with something else. And Cosmic seemed to fit a little bit better. We actually like the way it rolls off the tongue better as Mythic Legions, Cosmic Legions. It kind of just fits better. Mm -hmm. But there's no reason we can't venture off into Western legions, uh, you know, any kind of legions. I was thinking there were things like um, uh, post-apocalyptic legions where it's – or maybe uh, steampunk legions, something like that. Cyberpunk yeah, so legions. Hunk cyberpunk ball. legions. I mean, there's all kinds of ways we could go, different genres of pop culture. Um, there was one that we want to do our own version of – you know, superheroes and supervillains, um, potentially called like Ultimate Legions or something like that. We're just thinking of different genres. So as you said, Cosmic Legions, we launched the, the uh, big teaser of that at Legions Con uh, this last weekend. And um, it's going to be a space based line. It's going to be, we're going to do the initial launch of it in uh, 2021. We're hoping first or second quarter of 2021 but depending on how things go with everything that's going on in the world right everything. now <laughs> the lines we like our lines got pushed back because of covid so uh there's one line that's going to be getting released or one wave that's getting released in december or january that was supposed to be released back in september october wow so that's back things up so Right now, it looks like it's going to be first or second quarter. We're going to do the launch of that, and we're still not certain as to whether we're going to do that Cosmic Legions as a Kickstarter, the way we did the first two waves of uh, the first two big waves of Mythic Legions, or if we're going to do it as a, just a, stay, a 
sale through Store Horsemen, our online uh, oh, okay. retail outlet. We haven't decided yet. We think that Mythic Legions is popular enough now that we can release it through Store Horsemen, but we get a lot of new eyes on it, plus the eyes that we already have on Mythic Legions by doing it through Kickstarter. But we'd have to hand a lot of money over to Kickstarter to do that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's it's kind of a, a tough decision to make. We'll get there, though. We'll figure it out. But, yeah, 2021 Cosmic Legions, kind of a, our outer space version of Mythic Legions. Cool, man. I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys got up your sleeve with that. We did a awesome. team of one of the uh, – I hes- hesitate to call them Space Marine figures. But it's it's essentially the warriors in outer space, their suit and stuff. You get to see, like, the shoulder and the upper torso and one of the big bubble helmets that they're wearing on uh, one of our recent um, teasers we posted all over the Internet. So we'll be revealing the rest of that pretty soon. Beautiful. Beautiful. Listen, I wanted to bring up, um, especially for those who don't know who Mr. Cornboy is or what the hell he does, um, just just a few greatest hits that he's that you guys have worked on okay just and then we'll talk about this real quick okay so i have i have written right here okay so you guys work with mattel with the human classics thundercat classics um from a one to a five you did a few toy bees um uh marvel figures i'm not mistaken right yep. um one of my most precious things which i don't own a single one because i'm a bitch but it's the 2002 he-man line that 2000X, whatever you want to call it, He-Man line, I thought, dude, god damn it. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Let me let me relax here. <laughs> then you did 08, uh, Tears Between the Nerd Turtles for NECA. Then um, I think you did some work for Sideshow Collectibles, um, the Bosque or something, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. Um, and a shitload of DC toys, no question. <laughs> There's so many. Funny enough, I just saw it for Super 7, because you're like, you know, kicking ass with Super 7 right now. Ren and Stimpy, that shit looks amazing. It looks like it came out of the goddamn show. It's just whoop right there. It's so <laughs> sick. I, and it's just like, it to me, it was out of nowhere. You know, I'm so used to seeing this badass figures from you guys, and then bam, there's Ren and Stimpy. You're like, oh <laughs> shit, that's what's up. You did a Voltron, uh, more TMT, the Heenan classes, more Thunder, uh, Thundercat stuff. But more importantly, something that's dear to my heart. I know how shitty it is. It's the He Man movie. And you guys are working on fucking <laughs> shit. Like, you're bringing out like, Hyper Skeletor. And I'm just like... And the Skeletor from the movie, too. The normal one. Listen, I I understand the flaws on that movie. I'm not stupid, you know? I love He-Man. I get that the movie... Whatever. But I still love the movie. Like, I watched it when I was a little kid. Like, I still fucking loved it. I wasn't an adult to be like, Oh, yeah, this movie sucks. What happened here, here, here? Like, you know, I saw Dolph Lundgren as He-Man. And the sword is awesome in that movie. But the fact that you guys are making uh, toys, like Super 7 is making toys, you guys are sculpting him. Um, I'm, you know, it's just like I was, I was mind blown. I'm like, I never thought I'd see the day when we got figures from this goddamn movie. I've been wanting figures from this movie for so long. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just pumped up that you guys are working on that. How is it working with Super 7, by the way? Oh, they're, they're freaking amazing. I almost said a curse word there, but I'm trying to avoid that. Yeah, uh, this got to be clean. I'm being all nasty over here. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, they're freaking amazing. They're great to work with. As far as those um, those uh, masters figures go from the movie, um, because of legal reasons, we weren't allowed, actually allowed to call them, you know, movie masters of the universe. But they were called like the William Stout collection because he was one of the designers for the movie, I guess. But okay. yeah, I mean that's what they were. They were the the and. Mattel had been do- trying to do those for years, but I guess couldn't find a way to get around the licensing aspect. And that's one of the things I admire about Super 7 is they always, they are tenacious and they always find a way to kind of finagle the licensing so it works within their parameters and they're not stepping on any toes and they're that's getting awesome. done what they need to get done. And that is a prime example of it, that they were able to do those three figures. The God Skeletor is absolutely beautiful it's all like two-tone gold and it's just in person that thing is stunning i'm really happy with the way that came out. But yeah that was fun to do one one uh, thing that you left off there that i'm really proud of though is the uh the neca nightmare before christmas figures we did those too oh see I, I didn't know that i didn't know yeah. that. that's awesome yeah we've, we've uh that's one of the things that to me is kind of like a feather in our cap is that we don't 
Yeah, we have our own style when we do action figures, especially Eric Treadaway. Like, I can look at a, a bunch of action figures, and kind of like comic book artists, I can pick out ones that Eric sculpted just from the style of the face and the hands and some of the detail and stuff. So he has his own style, but we also are able to do other different variations and styles too. So we've done everything from like the most cartoony of characters to the most detailed, insanely just detailed characters. You can do it all. I mean, shit, you can do it all. I don't know if we can do it all, but we definitely have enough talent surrounding us. I've always said that I like to surround myself with people that are more talented than I am. And that holds true for pretty much everybody I work with. (laughs) They're all way more talented than me. I'm lucky enough to like grab onto their belt loops and let them all drag me along. But um, uh, yeah, we, we're lucky enough to have so many talented people that we work with that, uh, that allow us that, that ability to do a lot of different styles. Like you're saying the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we did both the comic version for NECA way back when. Mm-hmm. Now we're doing like the, um, it's kind of like the, the 80s toy line that we've kind of upgraded to now. We were changing all the scales to make sure that they, they're all scaled where they should be to one another. We've added in a bunch of articulation and we're just fortunate enough over the years to have been involved with nearly every major um, property or uh, license out there. We've been able to like reach in and touch and actually do a little work on some of them. Really that's pretty, important. That's pretty awesome. I'm looking at pictures of the Nightmare Before Christmas stuff, and, uh, I mean, it, awesome. Like, Yeah. Like, I think just, Diamond Select's doing those now, and they're doing a fantastic job. But when we did those with uh, NECA, just figuring out some of the articulation on some of those characters and making them yeah, they look good and, and the articulation well enough incorporated and that they still look good, but they, you could also, you know, you, they're fully posable and stuff. That was a... That was a challenging project. We love a challenge, but it's fun. Is there a, a property you haven't tackled yet that you really want to tackle? We've actually tackled a little bit for Toy Biz years ago. Um, we did some fantastic four figures for them. Um, we didn't get to do them the way that we wanted to do them. What we got to do is they based them on a the, the Fantastic Four comic book being released at that time, so the costumes were, you know, they weren't as classic as we would have liked. The thing was based specifically on, I think it was Mike Waringo's artwork at the time. Um, so we got to do that, but not quite in the way we would have liked to have done it. One day we will get our hands on the Fantastic Four because that's my favorite superhero group of all time. The thing for it, for me, is... Oh, it. really? That's, yeah. As a matter of fact, if we ever do Fantastic Four... The thing will end up looking at least somewhat like this. This is one of only two in existence. Eric sculpted this for me for Christmas. It's a uh, really John Byrne version of the thing, and it has articulation. You can see the blue in here. That's where the uh, paint has worn off the articulation points. But yeah, I don't know how well Damn. you can see that on my crappy camera, but. No, I mean, it, it looks good. It looks like a fucking legit figure painted and yeah. everything. Woo! Kind of like a cross between John Byrne and a little bit of uh, Kirby as well. But uh, if we were ever do Fantastic Four, that kind of stuff is what we do. It'd be very Kirby-esque, um, very John Byrne influenced, maybe gotcha. some Art Adams influence in there. Just what we would see as the classic fantastic four one day one day maybe we'll do it. we get we have friends at hasbro so maybe we'll <laughs> knock on the door one day and say hey persuasion my friends yeah let it let us sculpt some fantastic four one know? day one Should day and when one day i'll have eric sculpt me the rest of the team too we'll see <laughs> he made that for me for christmas surprised me with that thing for christmas one year and this Jesus is Christ. my favorite action figure i have in my collection now just because of that i mean it looks amazing dude i, I just cannot I opened up the box and it was benjamin j Grimm, fully painted and everything i was like what that's yeah. sick that's so sick i wish i had a friend that knew how to sculpt and prepare <laughs> shit like that so they can give me like stuff that i want yeah, I'm um, lucky that way. Unfortunately, Eric's already always completely swamped with Mythic Legions and then other projects <laughs> that we're doing for companies that he wants to handle. So 
That's awesome. He hey. doesn't have time to do this kind of stuff anymore. One day I'll, I'll hire him to make me the whole Fantastic Four. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was going to ask you, is there uh, any chance for uh, Super 7 to do the uh, 2000 He-Man line? At this point, no. They, I don't think they don't have the license any longer. And I don't know that Mattel is allowing anybody to have the license to do action figures right now. Okay. But who knows what the future may hold? I mean, like I said, uh, Super 7 is, they seem to be mastered at being able to, to figure out how to get the licenses they want and like work around different aspects to make it work for them. So I have no doubt that at one point, if they think that it's going to be something lucrative that they can do, they would probably go for it. So we'll see. Gotcha. Some, someday somebody might do it. I mean, right now we're working on the Masters of the Universe uh, Origins figures for Mattel. That's kind of like they're taking the, the figures from the uh, 80s, the original Vintage Masters of the Universe, and then we're putting all the new articulation into it and stuff and just uh, slightly altering the the looks of the faces so it's not 100. I think I saw those at Walmart. They're carded and, yep. you know, the small, like just very original looking. Just with all that articulation. Okay. Oh, awesome. I didn't know you guys were working on that. That's dope. Yes, sir. Why would I be surprised that, that the four horsemen are working on He-Man? <laughs> yeah. I, the only, we didn't do the um, Battle Cat and Panther. Mattel did that in the house or they had somebody else do it. Uh, we just didn't have the time. Like, they wanted it done. Like, can we get this done by then? Mm -hmm. Like, looked at our schedule and it's like, we can't handle it. We're not going to tell you that we can and screw you guys over. So, we, we just can't handle that according to our schedule right now. So they had somebody else do it. And they look beautiful. Um, I think they're doing vehicles and play sets and stuff for that. I'm not sure, but we're not handling those either. They're handling those in-house or having somebody else do them. But we're doing all the figures so you far. Did, you did the play sets for the classics line, right? In the Yes. Early, okay. Yeah. Those are massive. Did all the vehicles and play sets for those. That's Snake Mountain. Have you seen that yet? Yeah, dude. Oh, He's a monster. I <laughs> Like when we were building it, like we did drawings for it, had uh, Nate Barch, the guy who does design work and does like a lot of our package art and stuff. We had him do the design for it and we scaled it to Masters of the Universe figures and Nate was like, well, here's how big I was thinking. Do you think Mattel would go for that? And we're like, man, that's really big. There's no way. Let's run it past them and see what they say. And Mattel was like, yeah, let's do that. And we're like, what? Fuck yeah, baby. So, yeah, so uh, we started making that for Mattel, and then before they were able to release it, um, they had relinquished the license or stopped Master of the Universe Classics or something like that, and then Super 7 picked it up and started Master of the Universe Ultimates, which was essentially the same line with a different name, and mm -hmm. Super 7 diving in and doing it, and they said, uh, we want to do the snake mountain do you guys still have the sbls for that and you know we talked to mattel about that i'm like yeah sure so they talked to mattel about that they went into production on it and we were looking at each other going there's no way they're going to be able to <laughs> they think so but i you know more power to them if they can but there's no way and they did it and they, and they shipped it and people are getting it in hands they're having to ship it in stages because they're so huge and only certain mountains fit on a truck at a time from Uh, the old country from China. <laughs> yeah, I know. Call it. It calls it the old country. Um, the uh, so people are getting them in hand now, and kudos, man, because the thing turned out spectacular. Uh, Jim just sent us a picture the other day. Super Seven actually sent us one. We weren't expecting it, but they're gracious enough to actually send us one, and we got it at the studio the other day. But I haven't been into the studio to see it yet. I've been, you know, trapped here at home. Yeah, yeah. Of, The plague. <laughs> I'm sure Eric is all up on that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they've opened it yet because I don't know where we're going to put it. We have new studio space now, but I don't think we have any place set up to actually set that thing up yet. But don't worry, we will. That thing, and we still have <laughs> Castle Grayskull. They're both going to be up there. Mm. So. That's so sick, dude. The perks of the job, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, it's not very often. In Mattel, when we were doing a lot of work for them, they used to send us um, three or four of everything that we did, so each of us could get a copy of it. Um, but they stopped doing that. I think it was after Scott Knightley left the company. Um, they stopped doing that. Like, if we requested it, if we called and 
ask one of our friends over at Mattel, Bill Beneke or mm-hmm. Ruben Martinez or any of those guys, they'd probably say, oh, yeah, yeah, we can send them to you. But, you know, it's not, they're not like on the comp list or whatever, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we don't get any of that kind of stuff anymore. So when Super 7 just sent that over to us and surprised us, surprised us with us, that, with it, that, was, that was pretty awesome. Super 7 was sending us, some of, sending us some of the master stuff while we were doing it, too, though. Oh, yeah? That was super cool to get that. That's like I said, they're awesome to work with. Yeah, I, I mean, it looks like way, and what they're yeah. doing is fantastic. It's amazing how Super 7 just went from, like, here, and it's just, like, it's just skyrocketing. Yeah, and I can't wait. I'm not going to spoil anything yet. I cannot wait to see, for everybody to see some of the licenses that they're doing that we're working on with them right now. It's gonna blow awesome. some doors off, yeah. Awesome. San Diego, you think, or well, whatever it's gonna be, you know. Maybe, maybe Toy Fair, maybe San Diego. I don't know. I mean, that's not maybe. our end of things. We don't handle that end of things, but I think they'll probably have stuff ready to show during Toy Fair if they want to, and they'll definitely have a lot of stuff ready for San Diego if they want to show it then. I but, hope so. I hope so. It's at Toy Fair. And by the way, do you think you're gonna have like a Toy Fair in New York, or this is gonna be a visual and shit, right? I don't even know. Um, I think they moved Toy Fair back to June this year. Normally, oh, really? February, yeah. I think they bumped it back to June. There was something somebody was saying about it. We're working on a project for a company right now that I can't really discuss that we're going to have try to have done by February because I think that they're still having like an event in February during when Toy Fair would have been. But okay. I think the actual in-place event, I think, has been bumped back to June this coming year. Okay. And we'll see if that happens. I'm sure they're hoping that they can have a a normal one, but I don't. Yeah. Mm, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. The, we'll who, see. who knows? Well, exactly. Who knows? Um, I was gonna ask you what your favorite project was, but I have a feeling you're gonna say Fantastic Four. Am I correct? Or do you have yeah, a well, favorite I mean, project? That that particular version of Fantastic Four that we did for Toy Biz was not my favorite version. Oh, okay. Of Fantastic okay. Four, so it wouldn't have been my favorite project. Um, I was excited that we got to work on them. And I was thankful for having the work, <laughs> but um, it wasn't my my favorite project we did. I think that I mean, I have to say Mythic Legions, right? That's like a big project. Right. But if, if it wasn't Mythic Legions, um, what you mentioned earlier, the 2000X Master of the Universe stuff, I love that line. I absolutely love that line. I was never like a giant Masters of the Universe fan. I was like a Masters of the Universe fan from afar. I really appreciate it and I love it. And uh, when my oldest son was young, we used to find Masters of the Universe figures at garage sales and stuff and he would just eat them up. He loved those things. (laughs) So when we had the opportunity to do Masters of the Universe and kind of do it in our own style, the way we wanted to do it, we jumped at the chance. We literally left at the opportunity and pounced on it and gave it everything we had. It didn't have as much articulation as we would have liked. Mattel did some testing with kids, I guess, and thought that maybe if we made it more of a, I forget how many points of articulation, but much less articulation points than we had. We had all the, you know, the elbows and the waist and everything. Yeah. Um, I think I would have liked it a lot better, but out of uh, all those figures, that the trap jaw that we did for that line, the gigantic, yep, crazy yep. mechanical arm that I made, I just, I love that figure. I still have it here somewhere. <laughs> One day, I want to make a uh, Mezco 112 Collective uh, custom of that figure with that big, gigantic crazy arm on it just because I love that one so much. That 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 poor show, man. That poor show. I I loved it. I thought yeah. it was underappreciated and then the designs were fantastic. Yeah. And um, like I was telling you, like what you guys did with those toys and the few statues that you guys made. Yeah. Oh my God, man. It's, it's some of the best He-Man shit that I've seen. You know, it's just so good and I still go back to it every time somebody asks me like, what are your favorite He-Man toys? They expect me to go like the original ones. I'm like, no, fuck that shit. I love the 2000 He-Man shit from Four Horsemen. It's amazing. And then they're like, oh, what is that? And then I'm like, and I show them like, oh my god. And that trap jaw is one of the first that one that the one of the first one that comes up. And it's just it looks fucking amazing, dude. It looks so badass. So so, hey, no, you're welcome. You're welcome, dude. And it's 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 they're so good. 
like you said, the cartoon was phenomenal. Like they had a few episodes here and there that you could tell were based to sell toys. Like they had some of the new <laughs> and yeah. stuff specifically featured in those episodes that you were like, oh, this is a hey, Talk let's tell this toy <laughs> episode. But most of them, the storyline and like the the depth of the story and stuff in those for a, a cartoon were fantastic. They they suffered uh, in getting bounced around in time slots. And so nobody could keep up with where it was being shown, and it just kind of kept going down and down and down in viewership and just got lost in the shuffle. So that yep. kind of stunk. But, yeah, that was, a, that was a really good cartoon. And it was going places, too. They had some uh, scripts for the next couple of seasons already lined up that were just, just stunning. It was going to be a great, great series. But are you, are you guys excited? Are you guys excited for the Netflix one? The uh... – uh, yeah, we don't really know anything about it. We're not involved with it. Um, we did do uh, one figure for Mattel for one of the Netflix series. I think there's two that are coming out. So for one of the He-Man Netflix series, we did, we did an initial figure for them that I think that everybody's going to base the scale and style and look off of that figure for the rest of the line. But we're not really involved in that, unfortunately. Okay. But, yeah. Well, not yet. Not yet. Maybe, maybe not later. yet. Yeah, hopefully they've got they're gonna have toys ready to go by the time the uh, Netflix series launches. But we'll see. Probably right. I haven't seen. Well, I don't think anybody's seeing anything like in the the public, so we have no idea. Yeah. I think there might have been some silhouettes shown or something, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. Yeah, but we've seen way, stuff, but of course, of course, <laughs> but you can't, can't say can't, anything. Yeah. You know, hacking into yeah. your computer right now. Hold up. Those were yeah. <laughs> Those horrible non-disclosure agreements that don't allow us to talk about everything we're doing. NDAs, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful thing. They are paramount in the toy industry, man. They love to keep their secrets in the toy industry. Hell yeah. I remember when I visited Saicho the first time, the amount of NDAs that I had to sign. <laughs> yeah. Because they were going to you know, walk me around the entire place. So it's like, okay, I need you to sit down. The lawyer guy's like... <sighs> I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was in my twenties. You think I read? I read any of that shit? I could be signing Nobody my life knows. away. My kids, who knows? Yeah. Nobody reads it. Everybody just signs it. So <laughs> just so much shit to read, man. Now, no, thank you. Hey, um, you mentioned sideshow earlier. We did uh, a few Star Wars twelve-inch figures for them that we've never really promoted or like said, hey, look what we did. But <laughs> I, I think I posted on my Facebook one time a couple of them. But we did uh, boss. We did uh, Hammerhead. We did. Um, Ooh, you guys did Hammer. I love. I'm such a. I love Hammerhead. It's one of my favorite yeah. characters in Star Wars. I saw that Hammerhead figure, and this is a while back too. When it first came out, fucking loved it. I'm happy Thanks. to know that it was you who you guys yeah. like. That's awesome. Yeah, that was for the sideshow st stuff. I think Hot Toys did it afterwards, but we did the sideshow version. It was a uh, Tusken Raider. We did. And we did one of the Yodas. I think it was a. Uh, I think it was like the third Yoda release. I don't remember. But for Christmas that year, they sent us the Christmas Yoda, where uh -huh. dressed in a Santa suit, a little Santa hat. They sent us all <laughs> yeah, yeah. For kind of like as a little thank you and a nod to the Yoda that we did for him. And there might have been one or two others. Oh, we did the. Um, we did Greedo, and we did the the playset where Han shoots Greedo with the table yes, and uh, yes, the yes. milk and the, the seeds. We did all that for uh, for sideshow too. Yeah, that been, uh, that's yeah, a lot. Might have been one or two other things, but I don't remember. It wasn't a huge amount, but we got to do aliens, which we're, we have a huge love for the monsters. If we had to do Han Solo or Luke Skywalker, we wouldn't have been nearly as excited. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> for a that one creatures. Yeah, we like the monsters. That's freaking hilarious. Um, is there anything else you do apart from this whole toy shed? Do you have another passion that you follow? Clearly, you're not into sports, you said, but like anything that has nothing to do with it, or you're just like, you know, this is this is my shit. The only thing I do is toys. That's it. Man. Okay. I do, do awesome. toys for work and I do toys for love. I mean, that's that's all. You're living the I mean, life, apparently. Yeah. If uh, if you know the wife. Or the girlfriend or someone wants to go do something and i'm you know i'm into whatever they want to do that's whatever but this is uh this is what i do i'm, I'm boring i'm into toys and luckily <laughs> i have people who love me that allow me to to do it without 
bitching at me too much about it. Dito, I mean, the wife designed this place for me right here. This is my little really? office. Yeah. So, uh, uh -huh. you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I don't it's get thrown out of the house. Crappy IKEA shelf behind me and some white shelves uh, <laughs> that we have stuff stacked on. That's pretty much it. One day I'll have a big studio and toy room, but now's not the time. Is, is this the only place you have toys displayed? Uh, yeah. I mean, other than when I first get them. They go on my kitchen table. I, for some reason, I sit at the kitchen table and, and like, play with them, and I take stupid pictures but right there at the kitchen table. I don't set up any kind of photo booth or anything. And I think that harkens back to when I was a kid. I didn't have my own room. My, my brother and I shared a room until he got older and moved out, and then my sister moved into my room. Later on, we had our separate rooms, but I, didn't, I was only lived there for a couple of years where I had my own separate room before I eventually moved out. So... What I would do is when I get new toys, I would play with them at the kitchen table before, you know, I, as soon as I get home, and then I'd take them outside or whatever. And I still do that. Every time I get a new toy, I take it, open it up the kitchen table, sit there and pose it, play <laughs> with it, and eventually it goes on the shelf. Sometimes they sit on the kitchen table for two two or three days. I'm sure that <laughs> drives my wife crazy. I was going to ask. It. Yeah, I'm sure it drives her nuts that I leave it sitting there <laughs> in the, the center of where I sit for dinner and stuff. But Corina's like... No, Gone. she's really good about it. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll come in there and like the mail will be thrown on the table or something. The figures will be knocked over. So I think she, <laughs> I think that's her uh, passive aggressive. <laughs> so just <laughs> get these off my table. <laughs> but for the most part, she leaves me be. She knows that you know this is my love and this is my passion. I don't go out drinking or or whoring around or anything. <laughs> so this is my drug, I guess. That's awesome. And, That's awesome. And toys bring home the bacon, so. The bacon, I exactly. I mean, you can't really, you know, if, if I was your wife, I can't really give you too much shit because <laughs> that's how you're making your money. Dude, this is all research and development, right? Hey, R &D, <laughs> I can baby. write it off on my taxes. R&D. <laughs> right off the space where you're putting your shit. Right yeah. off the st yeah. Oh, man. It's perfect. Yeah, I, don't, I don't do that, but <laughs> I try to stay I mean, you, as I you're, can. you're working at home now, so uh, maybe yeah, you should start, right? Now. Yeah, Shit, man, I should be doing the same too. The whole, yeah. but uh, but yeah. Anyways, um, Eric, I appreciate your time, dude. Thank you so much for being on here. I appreciate yes, uh, you know, all the insights into the toys and making all this amazing shit that you guys make. It's just you know, it's ridiculous. And and you've been like, it's funny because you guys have been like just in in our lives, like without us knowing or not knowing for the longest fucking time dude like you know we go out there we hunt shit it's probably your crap especially you know it's just it's just amazing it blows my mind so we're just it's old so cool. farts who do nothing but work that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> and create some amazing worlds time. dude that's Thanks. so cool so i wish you i wish you guys uh, much success with the new stuff that you guys are putting out um you, you know uh, i hope you don't have to do kickstarter if you don't you know so you don't <laughs> face it so i hope you get enough traffic on your yeah. website so you know keep all that moolah that you guys rightfully deserve for all the hard work and um yeah dude i appreciate it thank you so much man thank you so much thank you Pete. it was, it was enjoyable man i dug it and right, uh, by the way if you're ever up in the jersey area after covid all clear up <laughs> thing, come check out the new studio man do a walk through there if you want a hundred percent. I'll I'll hook you guys up. Hopefully, this check you know, like you said, disappears. You know, yeah. <laughs> Before twenty twenty one ends. Yes, sir. Good to talk <laughs> to you again, P two. All right, brother. Take care. Okay. Take hey, care, hey, 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 say hi to your wife. You know, Colts fan forever. <laughs> Absolutely, <we> man. <laughs> Later, Papa. All right. Take care. Bye bye.